super interesting and original video for you today. Um, as I've stated multiple times, and as any researcher will state to you, AI is not just LLM models itself, right? AI is uh, far beyond LLM models, and LLM models are just a small subcomponent of that. And today, we're going to dive into that quite deeply, and you're going to understand that quite in depth. We're going to start by examining this research paper, Algorithm of Thoughts, Enhancing Exploration of Ideas in Large Language Models. This came to me via my LinkedIn. This is an older research paper. It came out earlier this year. Older as in AI research. It came out on June 2nd of 2024. And researching this further, this algorithm of thoughts idea is about a year and a half old now. Microsoft seems to be the originator of the idea. Uh, and then, so Chain of Thoughts has been around for a long time. <laughs> and then uh, Chain of Thoughts was kind of the initial idea to infuse models on. And, and there's a lot of talk around Chain of Thoughts and, 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 and that whole uh, concept and, and idea. But this algorithm of thoughts takes it a step further, right? It, 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 takes chain of thought and then tries to break it down into algorithmic form, um, which to me is an interesting concept. And then so they produce within this a framework um, and a logical framework and, and, and examples um, within this, right? And uh, they utilize this purely for LLM models within this paper. But so to me, um, when I try to understand a concept overall, uh, I try to like kind of reverse engineer it, right? So I stumble upon this concept of algorithm of thoughts. It's interesting to me because it's uh, like intuitively, I can understand it's a step further than chain of thought, right? And then I'm big on chain of thought already. So I want to understand more about this paper and this concept. So I essentially, I reverse engineer the algorithm of thoughts, right? And then so that leads us here. And then so when I like typically look at these types of research papers, this is exactly what I do, right? I, I take um, their research, what, what their framework is and what their methodology is within it. And I, I try to um, uh, like break it down and understand it. So within this research paper, they have their algorithm solve for this game of 24. Um, and then so they break down all of like how the game of 24 works and then they feed it to an LLM model and then it solves it, right? And then so I was like, okay, let me first of all, just take their algorithm, just the algorithm itself um, and then build it out um, and then like not run it through any sort of higher logic and then see what happens. And then so I build out the game of 24, I build out their algorithm, no solutions found. Right. Okay. Cool. So then let's like next step, right? Let's, let's reproduce their exact logic. And then, so I'm going to create, I'm the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, the small, small LM, like the small LMs, like I, I like to test very small. Right. Uh, and then I utilize, this is this second is their, like their methodology fully from this paper, right? Run it through, run through same thing. Uh, and then I ask it to, to do this and then to give me step by step back. And then it, it gives me basically garbage, right? <laughs> Which is expected from this small LM model. And then outside of this, I do test this with like chat GPT four and Gemini and they're able to do it and pull it off, uh, and do this. Right. So I can tell like from their methodology that like, okay, you can do this. Right. But then as I'm going through this and as I understand this and, and, and I reverse engineer it at this point, I understand exactly what this algorithm is doing at this point, right? So to me, I look at this algorithm, the first thing I, the first concept I, I equated it to was like a random forest or a decision trees, like, uh, but that's not what this is doing because it's solving, it's a PPO type of algorithm. So pro proximal policy optimization. <laughs> and then so meaning like more for like reinforcement learning, right? Um, but typically within a reinforcement learning, so if you have like a Q star or a Q learning algorithm, how that's working, right, is it's uh, taking unknowns within the environment uh, and then you're giving it a reward mechanism. So you define the reward mechanism and then you go through and you say everything about the environment is unknown, go through and, and solve the environment. And that's Q learning, right? This algorithm is a bit different because what this algorithm is doing as opposed to that Q learning algorithm is it's not defining a reward mechanism, it's defining heuristics. And then uh, heuristics are essentially just here are is logic related to the problem itself. So then Within this, each individual 
uh, iteration of this algorithm then would be its own algorithm. And then like, I would know that upfront, right? But it's the same thing with Q learning. So people would, I think people will have knocked that within this concept. And then I could see that when you're relating this only to LLM models, right? <clears throat> but if you're looking at this from a PPO concept and a reinforcement learning type of concept, that's nothing new. Like that's, that's a given, right? Uh, and then, so I, take that concept and I'm like, okay, so let's take this concept of this algorithm of thoughts because I like what it's doing. And then so to me, what it's doing is it's essentially taking the problem and then it's take it, chunking it down into smaller chunks. Uh, and then we can use graph and grid based logic to store all of that information and to like kind of do that, right? Um, and then so I say, okay, I don't need the LM model for that. And then once I'm understanding exactly how this algorithm is actually working, what it's doing, et cetera, Intuitively to me, up front, an LM model is not the right algorithm type for this algorithm, right? Like they don't, they don't match. If it's like a puzzle piece and uh, algorithm of thoughts is one puzzle piece of the puzzle and then an LM model is the other, like they're not the right puzzle pieces to go together. Uh, reason being that this algorithm of thoughts model, it operates off of like, uh, like discrete environments, <laughs> which is like very, what LM models are very bad at par in particular. Like when you build a reinforcement learning model and you train it on like Q learning and Q algorithms, et cetera, you don't throw an LM model in there. You throw like generally like a CNN model in there, right? Like convolutional neural network, like something that's more visual related. And then because it's able to handle discrete environments, whereas an LM model, it has problems with that, specifically because of like the tokenization mechanism and just the way that it's built, right? It's built uh, for sequential problems as opposed to discrete, like, like, like explore your environment. It's just not the architecture of it. And then also too, you're wanting to explore these spaces uh, simultaneously utilizing multiple agents at the same time, right? Which is just all of these things combined and LM model is awful for this job. And then so this concept of algorithmal thoughts has been out for a few years now. It hasn't really caught on, right? Uh, and I'd like I can understand that if you feed this into an LLM model, it's it's kind of a garbage out flat out, right? But if you understand these variables, and then so my next step is, okay, I understand this. I understand that an LLM model wouldn't actually be the best approach for this. I think a swarm algorithm would be the best approach for this for all the reasons that I just laid out. And then so I essentially reshape this algorithm, rebuild it, uh, put swarm technology into it, uh, and then go from there, right? And then so we build it. I build out the algorithm. I utilize their same game of 24. Uh, and I can solve the problem instantaneously. It takes me zero seconds to solve the problem that they lay out within their paper. Uh, here it is. <laughs> and uh, every single time, right? Same, same solution. Zero seconds. Boom. There it is. Uh, and then, so I, I, I take it a step further, right? Okay, cool. So <laughs> this, this algorithm is pretty cool. It solved a heuristic problem, but let's give it like a completely different uh, heuristics problem, right? So like uh, this first one that we set up is, is their game of 24. But so let's solve a, a completely different problem. And then so uh, this problem is, is that we want to um, initialize a grid uh, of tuples. And uh, so essentially we give it like an environment to move in, right? Like it can move up, down, left or right, like, like the, kind of like an Atari type of environment. And then its job is to check if there's obstacles and to navigate the environment, right? And then so it it's the environment creates obstacles, there's distance involved, it wants to find the optimal path within this, like this maze basically is what we're creating, right? And then so you can see here, here's the grid, here's our maze, right? Uh, and then its goal is to navigate this maze in as little moves as possible. And then again, zero seconds, <laughs> like it, 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 it finds the optimal path to move within this maze and understands exactly where to go. So it goes from uh, here, to zero two, uh, zero to three. I'm, oh, oh, okay, I see. Uh, so it goes down, down, down. Okay, it makes sense. Uh, and then it goes through three. That makes all sense. Uh, and then cool. So we get our optimal solution <laughs> very easily within this. It's a very simple problem that I lay out for it within it, but it solves it very simply and, and, and very quickly, right? Uh, but then, so I want to get um, 
more like let's let's take a, a different problem right so then this problem is uh let's take uh, essentially like a, a huge problem in this instance right and then i want to uh essentially um this is like our, our a, a tournament ranker and then i'm utilizing in this instance a, a real world example of like utilizing uh page rankings uh and different types of systems right kind of like i'm trying to navigate like what you would build out and construct if this were a multi-agent system operating within like a business and environment going through like web applications to like the network navigating in the network having to make api calls etc right it would have to pull and do a lot of stuff and then in this instance you can tell it takes two seconds in the first one to operate in this one it takes zero seconds but we can see it comes back optimal page rankings circular dependencies and suggestions to break ties so essentially i'm giving it like three different problems right three different problems at one time go solve these three different problems come back and then join them together that's exactly what it does and then so cool right so then we can see this is solving it in a real world business environment problem this is solving like warehouse logistics and then some uh, moving de or or like internet logistics, backend logistics. Uh, to me, like network logistics and warehouse logistics, they're they're like corollary in the same. <laughs> I group them often together. But so uh, in this last example, right? I think like to me, I'm not a hundred percent sure uh, if like it's the. Um, best way to uh, evaluate this and, and to go through this by looking at and actually um, seeing it in real time, right? So let's use an example of we're going to do uh, prime numbers. <laughs> and so in this instance, I have a range of prime numbers, I'm 100,000, right? So from zero to 100,000, I'm going to set it to 50 agents. And then using this heuristics problem, I'm going to rerun it. I want it to solve and find every single prime number that exists between 0 and 100,000. And then I'm going to let it go. It's going to start running. Here it goes. And it's literally just going through and finding primes for me. And then you can see it's finding primes at a phenomenal rate, right? Six seconds uh, to go from 0 to 100,000. Let me bump it up a, a, another uh, magnitude, right? Let's bump it up to a million. And then it's going to, let's see how long it takes there. I'll keep it at 50 agents. And I can increase the number of agents too, right? So I can do like 500 agents when we start getting into like crazy numbers, right? Uh, and then it would uh, go through and run. And then also to remember, this is running in Python, which is like the garbage language, right? So it has to do garbage collecting and a bunch of stuff that people don't like that makes Python run a lot slower than this would be executing if I was utilizing literally any other programming language except for Python. Uh, and we can still see here, it. I mean, it, it's flying through this, uh, it's going through uh, and then uh, going through it, it's uh, I set it to a million <laughs> I might have set the goal uh, kind of big it's still running at 40 seconds right but I, I want to continue this to run and then see uh, how how it's going it's it's up to uh, six figures now uh, into the primes so uh, it's definitely getting up there uh, and then again I can control and then change the number of agents right I, I like changing the number of agents in, in, like both of these variables, so the range limit and the number of agents are going to magnitudinally, like they're going to compound on each other. So you multiply them together. Uh, and then that's what uh, gets your like compute power, right? So uh, if I change this to 500, uh, like and, and increase that magnitude and I increase the magnitude to a million, I'm in, increasing the magnitude twice. Like that's a lot, right? So that's why I kept it at 50 um, to, to keep it going and, and to keep it chunking here. Uh, but I mean, I did increase the magnitude from 100,000 to a million so like uh it is expected that it's going to take some time to uh chunk through this uh and then we can see it's starting to slow down right cool it's a minute 37 to execute and then there we go uh but it did and then we have every single prime number now uh has been found between zero and one million within one minute and 37 seconds utilizing python to me it's pretty good right overall and then this is utilizing this algorithm of thoughts algorithm so it's essentially just breaking this problem down into many chunks and then utilizing a grid-based solution uh, for the model to follow a heuristics i give it you know here's the heuristics for the problem and then that's kind of like i don't know what the reward is uh, but here's the heuristics go find the heuristics within it uh, and then your reward is uh, the solution so go find the solution bro and it does right this is pretty cool algorithm overall 
a big thing to highlight and, and just uh, end this on is, again, if you are playing around with this algorithm and the very first thing that you do is you feed this into an LLM model and you're like, hey, what's this going to do? With the LM model, it's not going to do a lot. <laughs> it's going to be kind of garbage to you, which is why I'm assuming that there's been a lot of papers on this particular algorithm and nobody's picked up on it yet because nobody has run it outside of an LM model. Because even the paper itself is like for enhancing exploration of ideas in large language models. But I don't know, man. If you understand exactly how this is doing, like just take the algorithm apart, like I did here in the very first step. Very first thing I noticed within this is, hmm, you shouldn't be running this with LLM models. Uh, and then here we are. I'll leave a link to this collab in the description of this notebook or of this video. If you like the type of this type of content, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.